All right, everyone. He's Welcome just stand there. to this week's episode of Battle of the Games. And when I say this week, I mean body. this particular time that this video will be uploaded. <laughs> I'm like the parents from Tommy Gary. <laughs> and today, we do not have a physical box because Dwayne is not prepared wah, for the wah, wah. production wow. schedule. Wah, wah, and he wah, said, wah. look, I drove so far to get to the studio. I'm not getting paid for gas or by the hour or I'm at not all. not getting paid at all. So <laughs> <laughs> not going to go back and get the box. Pay today, we are talking about Life of Amazonia. Life of the The picture Amazonia. that I just put right here. This one, and I'm going to extend it, and I'm going to pull it back in. And I'm going to extend it again, and I'm pull it back Whoa. in. Whoa. Right. Look at that. Whoa. And well, if the box right didn't move at did all, <laughs> if the box didn't move at all, it's because I couldn't figure out how to make all that happen. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Board and Scale Podcast. Battle of the Games. Board and Scale's first ever snake video. Another vendor spotlight. At the penguins the only one with any character. What you're likely to hatch when you mix certain genetics. You know I don't play right, 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 right. <laughs> Editing <laughs> skills on point. Yeah, editing zero. Okay. Life of Amazonia is a game about nature you that know. I would let... Dwayne take over because it is Dwayne's number two. It was your number two? My number two. two. It's not your number two anymore. No. Anyways, Dwayne, what's Life of Anyways, Amazonia sorry, about? Yeah. Talk to us, Goose. Life of Taco. Amazonia is all about you building your own version of the Amazon jungle. So, what it is, it is a bag building game where you gain resources whether that be money money in an amazon game yeah coins corruption coins leaves water f- fruit tomatoes you will you will tomatoes you will add that into your bag and each turn you will pull out a uh, five tokens and then with those five tokens you have to spend on actions for your turn, whether that be expanding your jungle, bringing animals into your jungle, um, putting trees and flowers into your jungle, so on and so forth. Now, the big part is those animals, there's eight different types of animals, and they each score their own type of way. And each animal has four different variants. So it is a very replayable, um, but that is the gist of it. It was, it's like, I like to say it's Cascadia plus you throw, you take animals, you throw them into your jungle and depending on the way that they're set up and placed, they will score certain amounts of points. That is Life of the Amazonia in a nutshell. I really enjoy it. Okay. Babe, you want to go first with your rating? Uh, yeah, I can. Um, so I don't hate this game. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, I do enjoy the shorter, ver- the shorter variant that it has. Um, it just, I don't, you start with less animals, right? Yeah. Um, so each pool of animals that you have for each type to pull from is just less. Um, it just makes the game go a little bit faster because I just feel like the full the full game can kind of drag on a little bit. Um, it just feels like it's more game than it needs to be. Um, but I f- like the concept of the game. Um, the game itself is good. Um, it definitely is Cascadia Plus. That is a great way to explain it. Um so I would probably give it a seven. A seven. And after that scathing review, a seven. Yeah, seven's a. I get, we do this every time. <laughs> like seven's a good good rating for Ken's. It is. It is. It's a solid. It's like anyone else's eight. Seven is good for me. Sure. Yeah. I just think seven in general on on anyone's scale is like. Literally Fine. a C. It's good. It's a C minus. 
seventy percent to math C-. guy over here. Hey. Anyways, it's, it's passing. My turn now. Competent. It's not it a is failure. A my turn now. And I will say that this was actually, if you watched the podcast episode, whenever long ago that was, because I don't know when this is going to go up, <laughs> where we talked about wanting to enjoy games more than we did. Unfortunately, Dwayne, this is one of those where I love the theme. I love the art. I love the animals. I love the minis. Oh, shoot. I love the concept of the game. Like the others, I do feel like in the longer, in the long, the regular version of the game, you get to a point where you're like, you have too much stuff in your bag and there's like nothing else to do but like just try and rush the end of the game. Maybe you have more time to buy those like end game objectives from those cards, maybe some of the wildlife cards, whatever. But I feel like the cards really do nothing. They do, do you if you have buy more the time cards? to buy them. If you, they, you don't have enough time to buy them. <clears throat> yeah, it's no, it's just a, you know, when you think about the priorities of play, like the things that you're trying to do, they don't really become something you're all that invested or interested in until much later. And they I also, also think you're going to rarely buy them in the short game because they're like nine water. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's the other thing is, is that they're really expensive on a single resource that has utility in the game elsewhere, but not to the extent that you need it, right? So, like, you have to, you really have to get, like, the level three um, water droplet uh, chips and whatnot into your bag in order to make that even close to viable. Um, and if you're doing that, you're not doing other stuff. So only in the late game would you actually have time to potentially pivot to try to snag some of those. Yeah, and that's if you play the long game. You play, like you said, play the short game. You don't really have time to build up your resources to get those. Which, whatever, I'm fine with. It just feels like, okay, now it's kind of like one part, one piece of the game that is just mostly ignored. Mm -hmm. Maybe someone, you know, spends a bunch of pecans or whatever they are to see get one of the cheap ones, you know, on yeah. their way out of the game. But otherwise. Besides how long it takes and that the last few turns kind of feel like I'm just an automatic. You know, I know what I have to do. There's no choice, really. I like the game, and I'll give it a 7. My biggest hope for it that has a big potential to raise the thing for me, the rating for me, an expansion that is different animals. Makes it to where every game you get a random set of animals to play with and not just the same animals A side, B side. You know, because to me, I was like, cool, I played both sides. And you know, it'd be a really the cool upgrade. There are two more sides. The waterfall. There's the C&D. <laughs> oh, yeah. If someone had a fully wooden upgraded set with the wooden pieces and a wooden waterfall. I think if somebody had fucking acrylic those? tiles for one of their favorite Guess games. Guess who's getting acrylic tiles? Oh, I was waiting for it. <laughs> so I give it a seven just because I like it enough. Nothing crazy for me, but I do like it. Yeah. Kev? Um, a lot of the same stuff. Fuck you. Um, are old. I, <laughs> that's true. Burn. <laughs> it's a, it's a delightful game. I would absolutely never turn down an opportunity. Like somebody say, Hey, I want to play it. I'd play it every time. Even the longer version. That's fine. I have no problem against the long version. It is longer than it needs to be. Um, I think the the thing that to me feels the, the problem is is that there aren't like steps, right? So there's two steps for as far as like like the frogs and um, some of the other like cheap animals that you can kind of get out early, um, and then there's like the otters and the stuff that's much much harder to get out. The cheetahs. And like there is kind of like that intermediate step with like the two cans and stuff, and it does. I mean, there is a slight gradation, but basically, like once you start getting to the point where you can, you're getting some of the more expensive or like the higher value chips into your stuff, you, you're basically broken and like breaking into the the higher levels at the same time. So, you know, you start out without access to them, and then all of a sudden you have access to them, and then for the rest of the game, there's nothing left. Right there's again we've talked about those the objective cards and whatnot, um, but 
they that's a single resource that's not really that useful for a lot else um except for moving up on one particular track in the game um and it's just i feel like for me and yeah again so it's like an expansion something that not only just had some other animals but bigger animals right and i know this is hippo well that's a problem is this is the amazon right who cares so one, you would have to just one like, big ass rare hippo. Well, as I say, like you could just like, like that big. If you if you were to like expand it beyond Amazon, Are there yeah, you dolphins could do like in the Amazon. <sighs> yes. Pink dolphins. The pink yes. dolphins, yeah, because yeah. they're all Wait, coked for up. Real? Yes, it's one of the animals in the game. Well, that's what I was asking. Yes, they are real. Oh. Yeah, okay. the Amazon is an absolutely insane. You ever seen Jungle Cruise ecosystem? Ow. Yeah. Yeah. Never mind them. Ignore There's that. a lot of stuff they could do. I I mean, obviously, like with like my default, like thinking of like bigger animals. I'm like, oh yeah, like giraffe, it's elephants, rhino, hippo the rhino, hippos would be great. But that's all like Africa. So maybe you could do like an Africa expansion or something like that that really adds the opportunity. <laughs> life of the Africa. The Africa Amazon. Well, no, you just you just it's <laughs> life of the Amazonia, the Africa expansion. You don't got to get weird with it. You just could be like, hey, like they I got already it. made Serengeti. <laughs> yeah, but just a way <laughs> to give yourself something heavier to work towards really bigger scoring opportunities and whatnot. I think that would give you that feeling that the second half where we're like not second half, but really like the last third of the game has something to really drive towards because after a while it is just like, all right, like you pick something. I'm like, all right, cool. I want to, I want to maximize an otter or two or whatever. And you work towards that and you get to a point where you're like, I've done everything I, I think I can do to like maximize the points for this particular animal. What am I going to work on next? And you're like, Oh, I don't actually have enough time to do like another big play setup. So I'm just going to kind of piddle around and fill things in and try to maximize a couple points here, a couple points there and whatever. So I think that would be really helpful. Um, I do appreciate, so we've talked about this before as a bag builder. I appreciate that you always expend your bag. You will never, maybe not never, but for the most part, the regular play of the game is, you know, you, you pick out of your bag and it goes into a boat and then once the bag is empty, the boat goes back into the bag. So you're never in a situation where you're drawing all of your crap. Not like in Orleans, where you might not ever draw a thing that you need. Yep. Uh, or Alice. Uh, Wonderland's War. Wonderland's War. Thank you. Um, so um, I do wish there was... So like what Orleans has is a really, really easy system to remove stuff from the game, right? From yeah. your bag. There, Town hall, baby. There is a mechanism in Life of Amazonia to do that. It is limited, though. It's expensive, too. Yeah. So pulling some of that stuff out, I think... Expressive. Yeah. So it's just a little bit harder to do. Um, and I think that could probably help um, as well. But um, so I enjoy it. I think it's a fun game. Um, I'm going to give it a 7.5. All right. Drum roll. I really... I really, 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 really like Amazonia. Um, ever since the first time I played it, I was like, oh, yeah. Didn't you play like 10 times in two days? <laughs> I played that game religiously. <laughs> um, not saying that, well, I don't play it as much as I used to. But Ark Nova. Ark Nova. But took over. Ark Nova or Amazonia. See what you did. <laughs> um. Amazonia, yes, I was playing that all the time, and I still like it. I still like it to this day. Um, yeah, <laughs> every <laughs> every time I've played it, I was like, yeah. oh, dude, this this it's not getting any like worse. I'm not getting bored of it. Um, I've also found out that I really like bag builders. I guess after playing Wonderland's War for the third time. And Orléans, I was like, man, I, I, I guess I just like bag builders a lot. Um, but yeah, and of course, animal theme. So it's gonna get some points for that. I'll be completely honest. I'm biased, yes. Um, but like I'll say for the fourth time, yes. Even on my first play of this, I was like, this game's a little longer than it needs to be. Uh, they did make Serengeti wild which i also heard i've never played i really wanted to i've just never been able to get my hands on it but i also heard had some problems with the length of the game 
Mm. that it was also longer than it probably needed to be. Um, but you just play the short game and I'll be, I'll, I'll be honest. I even think the short game is a lit is even is like just a little teeny tiny longer like, still like two still. turns too long. Um, but the shorter game does, it is shorter. Um, but I will say at the end of the day, I'm going to give it a nine. And folks, just so you're aware again, I feel like we do have to say this every other episode. This list has probably already changed, you know, our top fives. It's not, not it's, probably, it has. It's taken months. It 100% it's has. It's been months of, uh, since we started <laughs> this, and we've played, we've all played some amount of new games that potentially may have shot up. We've played, you know, games that, like, were starting to be staples that really settled into that role and are now huge staples. So Games that we assumed other people were going to pick that yeah, we didn't so put in our top five. Basically, as soon as duplicate. this series is over... We'll start the next one and it'll be all different games. <laughs> Mostly. I'll, but we'll yeah, see. I give it a nine. I'll give it a nine only because the only thing that I that I can say that I don't like about it is how long it is. That it shouldn't be that long. Yeah. All right. All right. And that is our Life collective. Life of the Amazonia. That's our collective review of Life of the Amazonia. Hope you enjoyed this. And if uh, you want to watch the other ratings and go find those videos. Otherwise, you'll see this game, wherever it is, again, somewhere in the rankings video. Bye.